whatever you need. We'll, we'll, we'll get it to you. So guys, today what we're going to talk about is how to find the most explosive stocks to trade. You know what I mean by that? So there's different aspects of trade. Okay. So the art and science of trading essentially is number one, how to find the right stocks to trade, meaning how can I find the stocks that best fit right my system, the best and most explosive stocks that I can find that fit like the parameters of what I'm looking for, right? So like, for example, like, you know, if you like to trade small caps or large caps, it doesn't matter, right? But you have to find the specific stocks that actually fit what you're trying to do. Beyond that though, okay, now you found out, okay, I, I can find these stocks. Now it's about how can I find the entry points to them depending on the style of trading that I do. If I'm a day trader, I would have very specific entry points that are related to day trading. If I was swing trading, meaning you're holding stocks longer than a day, then I would have to find right specific entry points for those things. And then if I was investing, right, it would be a totally different type of entry point. So number one is, okay, I got to figure out what I'm trading, what I want to trade, then I have to find them. And then number three is I have to figure out how to actually enter them at the right points, at the right inflection points so that they actually go up first, not go down. And then of course, the last point is the managing of the risk. Okay, I have this stock, I found it, I'm in it. Now, what do I do, right? How many shares do I buy? Where do I put my stop loss? A stop loss is just a protective measure in case it goes down where your computer will sell you out of the position. And then beyond that, it's just managing the trade. So those are like the different things that encompass essentially a trade. But the first thing before any of that actually starts is how do we actually find what it is that we're looking for? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then I will go over and kind of give you a couple uh, tidbits or trading patterns that I personally like to use, which will show you how to enter them, which is kind of always, at least like when I was like learning how to trade, that was the hard part, right? It's like, you got something you like, like, hey, I want to buy into the Googles or whatever, right? I want to buy Apple, I want to buy this. But like, at what price, right? At where? Like, where can I buy it where it doesn't go down? Like, I want to buy it right when it starts going up. And the great thing about trading, especially the specific style that we trade, is that when you enter a stock, it should start to go up immediately. That's the whole point of timing, right? Like it shouldn't be like you buy something and then you sit on it for like weeks, figuring out if it's going to do something or not. Like when you get into these bad boys, you're getting in with a sole purpose. Even if it's a longer term trade, you're getting with a sole purpose. Like I am here to get this thing going. Now, hold on here one second. That's a little bit short. Anybody you stand up desk? They're nice, but you got to always have your desk at the right spot. So let's get to work. And then we'll chit chat a little bit later. So agenda for today. So number one, you know, we'll talk just for like 10 seconds, a little bit about who I am. You don't really need to know. I won't bore you with the details, right? I'm just a regular Indian guy trying to make some money. Oh, what makes stocks explosive? Three, scanning basics for day and swing trading. So there's two types of trading. There's day trading where you're holding stocks for minutes. And then there's swing trading, right? Where you could be holding stocks for days to weeks to even months. Number four, overview of free and paid scans. What I mean by free and paid scans, that's a, a, a lot of work. What are some tools you can use that are free so you can find what you're looking for? And what are some things that I personally use that will get you into a little bit more robust routine where you're constantly using software to get alerted to potential to potential opportunities. 
Number five, building a watch list using scans, routines we use to pick stocks from our scans and then add to our watch list, right? So like, okay, what the heck is it that I do when I wake up in the morning, right? Like what's, what's the routine? Like how, how can you wake up, you turn your computer on, but like, how do you actually go out and trade? And then number six, we'll go over kind of in detail how to continue on your education if you need more of it. I think you guys are gonna be pretty happy with what we do today. So who am I on the head janitor of this place? I started this company in 2008. Man, 2008 has been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. I'm not a 22 year old with braces that you know, claims he made like $18 million trading penny stocks. I'm just a regular person. Day trading stocks, I've been doing it for 15 years. And I've taught thousands of students how to trade all over the world. I've got students anywhere you can think of. The only place I can think of that I don't have any students is Turkmenistan. We even have some students in Kazakhstan. We don't have anybody from Uzbekistan or Turkmenistan. So if you ever, if anybody's from there, that would be amazing. I've been speakers at events all over the world, anywhere you can think about. Like I've been talking about my life's passion, which is trading. London, Japan, I mean, anywhere you can think of in the United States, I have been giving talks and conferences about my style of trading, which I believe is really the best style of trading for people that are trying to build accounts. So like if you have 10, $20 million, that's, you know, this style of trading is, is very good because it's scalable, but this is the best style of trading if you're trying to grow money. I'm not talking about like turning 200 bucks into like $2 million. But I'm just talking about like a regular person, right? <laughs> like a regular person that's trying to do this for a living at some point. I teach a momentum-based trading style because I believe that's the best way to number one, build for income. And then number two, build your trading strategy for wealth generation and growth. So let's go into just a few uh, scanning housekeeping questions. Uh, if you're just new to this, you know, there's probably usually two types of people that we run into. Type one is just somebody that just never really built any um, technology or any filters to find stocks. And type two is like, okay, I, I've been scanning, I've been looking for stocks, I've been trying to find, you know, opportunities, but like I'm just not able to find what it is that I'm looking for. That's, you know, both types is totally fine. And if there is oblivious to all of it, and it's even better. You know, my best students I've ever had, I think Jay's in this class right now, uh, in the workshop right now. Uh, he's the one I've been working most closely with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, my best students, they, they never even looked at a stock, you know, because they were interested in it. And that's how it goes. So you don't really have to be necessarily like, oh, I've been trying this for like years and right. And, and now I'm here. Uh, either way works. So good knowledge is knowledge. But even if you have no knowledge, it just means you get a, a fresh set to get going. So guys, why do you even want to like run filters, run scans on software? Well, in general, there's 4,000, over 4,000 stocks in the market. But even beyond that, there's like ETFs and indexes and all these different things that go on in the stock market. So reviewing each and every chart to find one that fits your trading plan, that's like not really going to work, right? Like you're not going to be able to sit there manually and look and research 4,000 stocks. So we have to come up with this essentially some type of way that you can filter down those stocks into certain criteria of what it is that you might be looking for. So scanning allows us to tell a software, I want to see XYZ in a stock. It could be something fundamental, like I'm looking for stocks that have XYZ type of growth and you know so on and so forth. Or it could be something technical. I'm a technical trader. What I mean by technical is, okay, we're looking for certain characteristics in terms of its price, how many shares of it are getting traded, and then the location of that price. So where it is in the scheme of how it moves. 
right? And that can qualify it as a potential candidate. So that's what I particularly do, right? I want to find stocks that fit XYZ category that I know all great hot momentum stocks have in common. So if you go through the world of past winners, stocks that have moved up 100, 200, 300, 400 percent over the course of right weeks to months to years, so on and so forth. Most of them in general have very, very certain and static characteristics. So if you look at like any great hot stock, right, of the last, like say two years, a majority of them are going to have traits that are in common. So like I'm talking about like your Shopify's and things of that nature, and we'll kind of talk into that. So we know what traits, great stocks that have run for like years, months, weeks have in common, then theoretically, we should be able to input in those traits into some type of system that can shout out potential opportunities for the next one and the next one. And so that's what we want to do. That's why we want to build out some scans and use software to do that kind of heavy lifting by scraping that entire market. Now, I personally have 18 trading patterns. I know that's like a lot, right? But like, they all have overlap in them. So in general, they're looped into like six with small nuances in each one. So it's not, a, it's not a huge thing to learn, but it is something to learn. So we got 18 trading patterns that we teach at Pools on Wall Street. And so I have to, how do I find these, right? Like, how do I find these? So I want to build out filters and technology so that I can find stocks that are fitting my criteria that I know lead to big explosive moves. Now in my 60 day trading bootcamp, you know, we kind of, we go over multiple scanning kind of classes and things like that. I think this is going to be a good uh, primer and a building a foundation for you guys in something that you can take even tomorrow and start using to find stocks. So our style of trading at Bulls and Wall Street is a momentum-based trading approach. We typically are looking for and trading the hottest stocks in the market. So when we get hottest stocks, right? That's like such a shitty term. But what I mean is like the stocks that have the biggest range, the stocks that have the most movement. And I'm not talking about like your penny stocks that like are just up like 200, 300%, but I'm talking about like things that you can really build on, like meaty things, meaning regular companies, mid cap companies, some maybe even small cap companies, but they're actual real companies that have some type of news out, some type of catalyst out that can propel them to move in exaggerated ranges. I very rarely trade small cap stocks. Every blue moon I do dive into it. I would say like maybe once a day or once every couple of days I'll dive into it. But I don't dive into it a lot because there's no money in it. Like, you know, you can do it for fun, but there ain't no money in it. I know like a lot of times if you're on social media or the tweeters, like you'll see like all these like small cap traders and they're like, oh, I made like $30 million, right? It's impossible. LeBron James makes $30 million. The CEO of Goldman Sachs makes $20 million. So like there's not a guy on Twitter, like sitting there trading $2 stocks, making tens of millions of dollars. And every one of my best friends is a trader. And there's a handful that I would trust, uh, there's a gentleman at in Investors Live who's really good, uh, Nathan. And there's a handful of them that are really good. But like, no. And he is probably the best out of them. But no, there's nobody that's making $20, $30 million trading fucking small cap, trading small cap stocks, right? That's just, it's not in the realm of it. The problem with, you know, trading really, really cheap stocks is it lulls, it, it brings in people that are desperate. So what happens is you have a low amount of capital. You think, oh, I have to trade the smallest stock to make money. I want to trade my, you know, change my $500 into right, something that's like generational wealth. Well, that's just not going to happen regardless. Like it's just, it's not in the cards. Like what you need to be doing is thinking about income generation. Meaning like, how do I take my money, whether it's $1,000, $2,000, $20,000, 
and build this $100 at a time, $200 at a time, then $300 at a time, $400. And slowly over time, you can build it. But you can't get that kind of consistency if the, your sole focus is just trading you know, penny stocks and things like that. The reason so many people trade penny stocks is because the marketing of it is geared towards people that are desperate. And they're, it's meant to prey upon that. And you don't really want to be, I mean, don't be a victim. Like there's nobody that makes, I can tell you, I've been doing this. See, I got no hair. I've been doing this my whole life. You know, and I've, I've met two, three people that can pull it off. So momentum stocks. And you can make just as much money trading $20, $30, $50 stocks as you can penny stocks, if not even more. Even if you have a small account, I'll show you some of those ways that you can. So momentum stocks are the following things. And this is why you know we trade them and why I like them. A meaningful PR, some type of news, sector catalyst behind that type of hype. We're looking for high relative volume. What I mean by high relative volume is, okay, a stock is doing 10 million shares a day. Now it is doing 20. Now it is doing 30. So like when you think about like stocks that can really, really right make moves. So if you're like, What's a stock that's been like really been cooking and booking right now? Um, what's the fucking thing that was going today? Start for the swing, by the way. Like this SPRT. This is probably right the hot one of today. All right, this is like uh, this was a twenty dollars stock in the morning. Like you, you've got certain characteristics that can take it right from fifteen, you know, fifteen to thirty. But one of them is relative volume. So you can see like this stock was really only trading right like a handful of million shares a day. And then all of a sudden, right, to go 7 million, 8 million, and then it starts to get 30 million, 50 million, right? So when their relative volume starts to go up, meaning it doesn't matter what the volume is, it's about the expansion of volume. Those are things that are really important because that's the fuel that can make a stock go crazy. So we look for high, relative volume in our particular names. Now, beyond that, we're looking for breakouts and breakdowns on larger term time frames. So you're talking about your daily charts, what are the ranges of the last month, the last two months, so on and so forth. When stocks start to clear levels and then they have a catalyst behind it with high relative volume, High ATR which means how much it moves around every day. And then it's got a history of making big, powerful moves in the past. Now you're on to something. That's the sweet sauce of big moves. So scanning 101. Scanning involves using a software to filter through thousands of stocks based on criteria that you set around that stock. So price of a stock, the percentage it's moved, the price that it's changed based on the last X amount of minutes, right? Like, hey, I want to look for a stock that's moved 10% in the last 10 minutes, 10% in the last 10 days, right? You need to specifically quantify what you're looking for. Price change based on some type of interaction with a moving average or a VWAP, some type of indicator. Like I run scans continuously on TC2000 on like when things on my watch list are approaching the VWAP, when things on my watch list are approaching the 9 EMA. So I start to get alerts based on that type of movement. So what that will do is alert me and say like, hey, a stock you're watching is approaching something that you're interested in. So I'll get a pop-up on my computer. And what that allows me to do is focus on it a little bit more in case it's going to do some type of big action. It allows you for a group, for a time efficiency, where instead of spending like hours, like reading reports, going on Yahoo, Googling things, you know, there's like so many different ways to research, but they're all time intensive. And what happens is like when it's time intensive, it means that you can only research one stop or two stops. And then what that means is that you're really stuck on those two, right? You're like really beholden to them. You're really biased about them because you spent so much time through it. What I need to do is find a way to be 
efficient. How can I go through the whole list of the gamut of the stocks of the whole world and figure out what fits my needs and do it within two seconds? So I have to build a scam for that. So instead of spending hours researching one or two things, I want to be able to spend an hour going through thousands of things very, very quickly. So we build scans around particular trading ideas. That could be, now I got a few different patterns that we use, but it could be a parabolic reversal. What I mean by parabolic reversal is it could be a stock that's like gone up so far, so crazy that I have to take it down, meaning like I'm going to short it, meaning I'm going to bet on it to go down. I could build a scan around momentum on specific time frames. So when I look at stocks, I look at them on a 90 day, 30 day, five day time frame. What I mean by that is I will run a scan to see what stocks are up the most, the last 90 days, the last 30 days, and the last five days, depending on the type of trade I'm looking to do. I run a liquid gainer scan which is a scan to pick up stocks like in the morning, meaning it's an intraday scan. So I have different types of trading. Of course, there's certain types of trading I do where I maybe I have a big idea and then I'm going to hold that stock for days to weeks to months. And then there are certain parts of my trading where I may be only looking to hold stocks for a handful of hours. So I want to be able to find both of those opportunities. Out of you guys here, like who's interested more in day trading versus swing trading? Swing trading is holding stocks for two days or more. Day trading is holding stocks for one minute. My specialty is day trading, but I actually started this business as a swing trader. You know, I just love day trading because I love the action of it. Uh, there's no more money in one or the other. Trading is all about, number one, what you're good at. And then, of course, like what does what's your schedule really like? You know, like, for example, like when I first started trading, like I had a demanding job. I was in my 20s. I was like the vice president of like a, a, a recruiting firm. So I was a headhunter. And uh, so I had to, like... I mean, I'm like always on the phone, I had meetings and like a team of people and stuff. So like at the time, like I just couldn't day trade as much as I wanted to because I'm actually like having to do work. <laughs> right? Like so you guys get at kids and stuff like that. So like swing trading really worked for me back then. And then what happened is like when I made enough money swing trading, I quit my job and then I was like at home. And then it was like, I'm sitting at home and I'm swing trading. Well, the thing is, like, when you're swing trading, you're holding stocks for, like, days to weeks. And I mean, they do all day. And, you know, I started Bulls on Wall Street, and we had a chat room of people, and we're, like, just sitting around all day because, like, the plays that we were in, they were just going up because the market was so hot, right, because you're coming out of that recession in 2008. So, like, you know, in 2009, like, every stock was just going up every day. And they were all, like, in their – even Bank of America, right, was, like, a dollar or two, and Ford was, like, 50 cents. Um so there wasn't much to do except just to hold them, right? So <laughs> we sat there. Everybody was so bored. Like we had like a chat room of, you know, 50, 60 friends or whatever. And we were like sitting there and we're like just sitting on our asses all day. And so then I was like, man, I got to keep everybody busy. So I just started throwing out a couple day trades here and there using the same patterns as the longer term trade. And that's when... I really got, I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> and so then that's where like kind of my day trading popped in. But you want to build scans around these for both because I believe over time, you should learn how to do both because the mechanics of them are the same. What I mean is that the patterns from swing trading to day trading to even investing, they're all the same or similar. What changes is the time frames that you're looking at. Hey, I'm looking at a really long time frame versus I'm looking at a minute by minute time frame. And I'll go into a couple of examples of some trades that you know I just recently took and, and, and kind of show you, you know, what's going on. 
So free versus pain scan is probably kind of what you're thinking. And I'm not, I'm a big believer that like your, your training is a business. So you're the CEO of your small business and you're trying to take it into a bigger business, right? So you're the head honcho of that group. So you have to always look at your costs, of course. So like when I was a new trader, like I was always like, you know, and I'm Indian, right? So like Indian people were <laughs> like, we're cost, cost, cost. So I was always like, oh, whoa, 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 <laughs> like hold your horses. So I was doing everything manual in the free way because I'm building up my business. And it's totally cool and it worked for me. The difference is just that it would, you know, take me hours instead of minutes. And then at some point, the thinking us Indian people, we're so, we're so stubborn. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was so, I'm thinking hours to save, you know, hours to save like 40 bucks a month. <laughs> and that's when it really, that's when it really got me. So like, as I got good at trading, and I'm like sitting there like manually doing a lot of stuff. They see me hours every day. Even my mom's like, you are so stupid sometimes. You will go to the bar and spend $40 on your little whiskey drinks. But then you're specific with your paper and pencil and do these scans all day to save $40. Oh my gosh, shit. I'm like, you got me. <laughs> you got me, ma. <laughs> right? That's an Indian thing, though, right? Like, we will drive around to like different. My dad does it to this day. Like, my dad drive, drive around, like, I got him a Porsche for his birthday. And he'd drive around to different gas stations to like save like three cents on his gas. And like, but dad, it took you like 30 minutes. He's like, hey, the deal is a deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A deal is a deal. <laughs> so it's the same thing with kind of with your scan. The free scans work. There's Finvis, there's Market Chameleon. Man, they're fantastic. Like they will do the work. It's more a matter of time, right? It's more a matter of time. Like I personally use TC2000. The reason I use TC2000 is because, not just because I can, put in the criteria of what I'm looking for, and I'm going to give you those criteria. What I'm looking for, but I can use it as a hub to actually find all that I want to do. So what I mean by that is like, okay, so what does that mean? Like, what's a hub? So what I mean is like, okay, this is like my main layout on TC2000. So I have like different scans here to find like momentum, right? So like, these are like different, these are all things that I traded today. So I have like filters and things, right? To find what I'm looking for. And on the same type of thing, like, you know, you'll find stocks that maybe are dying and that you want to be short. So this is like XYZ layout that I, that I made. And so like, it, I have layout. So like, you know, these are, this is a list of all the IPOs of the last year. So IPOs have been hot this, you know, if you really think about like IPOs have been really hot this year. So like I, I read, TC does it to provide me a list for these things so I can go through and find IPOs. And I love trading IPOs. Beyond that, right, like I can make watch lists of things that, you know, I'm really interested in to watch. So this is like a layout. This is a layout that I made. And then, of course, it's got your news and stuff so you can be alerted when stocks have news. And so this is like one primary essential layout. Beyond that, like I have different layouts for different things. So like if I'm looking to see like what the market indexes are doing, like see today, like, you know, natural gas had a 7% move. So like that tells me right off the bat, what's the first thing I should be doing tonight? If my natural gas had a 7% move, what's the first thing I should be doing today? I should be looking at natural gas stocks, right? Because like this is a really good chart and natural gas is making a big move. So in TC2000, right, I can make watch lists. You can just type in natural gas and you'll have lists of stocks of companies that do natural gas. And so like these are like different things that, you know, you can do right off the bat. So that makes it a little bit easier for the 40 bucks a month or whatever you're going to spend. Like I have the ability to have all these filters, news, so on and so forth. Even beyond that, you can use your TC2000 as like a, a journal. 
So I, I can say like, okay, this SPRT, right? So I can leave myself a note that says like, okay, I want to short this at $50. I'm just making something up, right? But like now I'll have like the ability to do that. When I take a trade, say like a, uh, like this dolphin, we were trading this dolphin today, you know, went from like 13 bucks to 14, but I messed up the trade a little bit. So I can like leave myself like a little bit of note with the chart in here and TC Thousand will hold it for me. So it's kind of cool. And then beyond that, like you, right, you can build a lot of different, a lot of different layouts and different filters. I know it's like a lot to look at, but uh, the other thing you can do is like watch multiple stocks at a time. So you can disconnect these layouts and then move them to other windows. So like right now I'm, I got 43 inch Dell. So these, like I'm, I got about two feet over my head on these monitors. That's what I'm looking up. I got 43 inch Dell monitors. So I got TC2000 layouts on all of them. So that's where, you know, it kind of ends up being a little bit helpful. So like in the end, like, would it be nice to save the 40 bucks? 100%. Um, but like, can you, all this stuff I can do is pretty cool, right? So I can make layouts, I can make lists, and then I can connect them to charts and things like that. But beyond that, like if you go in, you can see like you'll have, right? You can set alerts. So like you see this, like, okay, maybe I'm interested in this CR ticks. And by the way, this is like a really nice looking stock. What I can do is set price alerts to say like, hey, if this stock goes over, right? 105, you know, for in sometime in the next week, buy or whatever, right? You can leave yourself in description. So what ends up happening is you can get very organized. So the problem with some of the, like the free things is right, they're not gonna give you the ability to get organized. You have the basic parameters of what you need to do, but you won't have the ability to get organized. So that's like, I think the thing. So I use TradingView, by the way, a couple of people asked about TradingView. I use TradingView for cryptocurrencies, um, which is um, I think the best for cryptocurrencies. So I do have a trading view. I'm actually staring at one right now because I'm uh, I'm like I got like two thousand shares of this uh, soul <laughs> as I'm staring at it while we're going into this thing. Um, it's nice, but it doesn't really have any features. Like you can make lists and stuff. It's okay. I like it because it's cheap and it's good for cryptos. But like it doesn't really do it for me on stocks. It just doesn't give me the features that I need. But it is nice. Like I'm not, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And it's a web application. Like I'm, yeah, I'm just not into it. It's great for cryptos because it's all they have. Does that make sense? Cool. Now let's talk about building out your watch list. I think this is really the main thing, right? Like how do you actually go out and find what you want to find? So when we scan for stocks, I do all my heavy lifting in the evenings, guys, all right? Especially when the market is hot. Like I don't want to wake up in the morning and scramble, right? Because it seems like whenever you wake up, right? Life gets in the way. You got your kids barking at you. Maybe you want to do some exercise. You're tired, whatever it might be. So I like, I try to do a majority, I hopefully 90% of my homework before the market opens. And my nightly routine consists of maybe about 30 minutes. So it's not that, you're, right, you're not spent, you don't have to spend like hours and hours looking at things. But what I want to do, when I'm building my watches, I'm asked, uh, looking for a handful of things. Remember, it's day trading and then swing trading. Swing trading is multiple days. Day trading is I'm looking for something tomorrow. By the way, guys, somebody let me know if that soul coin hits like, $78, $80. I got a fucking lot of it. <laughs> I'm very shady. Now, does it, for a day trade, does this stock have enough momentum for a day two play? If this stock is up, is it getting parabolic near reversal levels? Does this stock have a history of making big moves? I think that one is actually probably the most important, right? Like, does this stock actually have a history of making big moves? What I mean by that is there's some stocks, like you may see a pattern on it and you look at it and it just, 
like this apple or something. Like I saw a pattern on this apple a couple of days ago, right? And this is like a nice pattern that, you know, we would trade. It's called a breakout pattern. But like Apple is like an older company. So it just doesn't have a history of making big moves. So like in the end, like whenever it comes out of a pattern, like it usually just pops like a couple dollars, right? Like that's not really, that's not what we're looking for, right? We're like, we want to look at and find stocks that have some big, big, right? Big momentum. So that's going to be a little bit different. So when you do that, like you have to find stocks that have a history of making moves. Like I'm looking for stocks that have, right, the ability to make 30, 40, 50%. So we want to always be really kind of focused in on some of those things. Is the stock part of a currently a hot sector? So like, what, why would that be important? Well, if you think about it, sectors is are very important. Does anybody remember like a year ago uh, when Tesla was making a big move? All the alternative energy companies like started to go nuts. And so what ended up happening was why that sector momentum is so important is like when one energy, when one company starts to make a move, they also, so like it was, this was, you know, the beginning of the year. So you see Tesla like $400, right? It moved to $900. So then what ends up happening is like, because this is making a move, there's a whole host of other sectors that are other stocks in that sector. And they're all turds. I, mean, I always remember that every stock is pretty much a turd. Um, they all start to move. So this is like a eight, nine dollar stock goes to 34. And then this RMO, this is like another electric company, right? This thing goes from eight bucks to 38. And then this is supposed to like a uh, NIO, right? This is like the Chinese Tesla. So this thing was a dollar, goes to $65, right? And then this was like the second Chinese Tesla, right? Where is this? So this thing goes from $19 to $76. So because Tesla made a move, all of a sudden the rest of them start to go. So it becomes important or like when you're running your scans to think on a deeper basis of, do I have some type of catalyst behind the whole thing to get this thing going? Does that make sense? Good. So beyond that, when we scan for stocks intraday, it's a little bit different. So like intraday, when you want to be, when you're looking for like day trades, you're going to be looking at things in a different way. So we want to be like looking for stocks that have big range, stocks that have big ATR. That means average true range. Does it? Okay, so I'm I'm about to make some cash is what you're saying, John. <laughs> Man, I screwed up on that too. I had like 5,000 of those like a, three weeks ago at 33, 30, 33, 31, something like that. And I sold my last ones at 50 and I got to chase this thing back up. It's really a shame. <laughs> so when we scan for intraday, we were asking ourselves, okay, is there a catalyst? Does it have a move for potential more? Does it have a history of making moves? So now these are like the scans that I use every day. So I'll kind of go over these with you guys. So if you're looking for in detail, so if we're looking for stocks that are just trending, so you're talking about like stocks, right? That are like your hot stocks of the day, of the months. I use a trender over moving averages scan. That's a scan that's essentially telling me what type of stocks are trending that are above their major moving averages. And I'll show you how to, uh, look at those in a second. These are great for locating swing trading setups with bullish trending stocks. Then I use a 90 day, 30 day, five day Momo scan. That looks for stocks that are trending in the last week to month to three months. Use this for building out our day swing trading watch list for like stocks that are in play. Like they just had like the hottest, hottest heat 
on particular time frames. Then I have a liquid gainers and top losers scan. That's going to tell me like, okay, what are the stocks that are up the most today? And what are the stocks that are down the most today? Why that's important is those are going to be your best day trading opportunities because they have so much range. And then we use a pre-market gap scan. Finding stocks that are gapping up on strong pre-market volume, which will have the potential for great trading opportunity. So stocks that have news out, guys, they typically gap during the in the morning. So what I mean by that is like they gap because they have some news out. So like stock is at 40 bucks. Maybe they got approved for some vaccine or something by the FDA. So the next day, right, it's at 45 bucks in the morning when you wake up. So it's gonna it's gonna show a gap. So I want to run a gap scanner because it's gonna show me what are the type of moves. So let me like go into like a specific, you know, the specifics of it. So when I think about these things, you know, I have essentially, right, like a pre-market watch list, and it's not pre-market right now. So like it won't show anything. So it's gonna show just the post-market moves. But the big area, but in the morning, like this will show like a list of all stocks with their volume that are moving around in the pre-market before the market opens. It's going to show you what stocks are gapping. And we can take a reasonable assumption that those stocks are going to have some type of news out. Beyond that, I've got a handful of other things that I like to use. So I use a liquid gainer scan. Stocks will start firing off on this when they start making powerful moves with big volume. So then, you know, I'll have alerts coming out like when stocks are essentially doing these kind of moves. Why is that important? It's important because we want to be in the biggest movers possible, right? It's not about small caps, big caps. It's not about price. We want to be the biggest movers possible so that our capital is just used in the most efficient manner. So I use this gap scanner and then this liquid gainer scanner when I'm day trading. But beyond that, like, you know, like I was showing you like this trender over MAs. This is like a great scan if you're a swing trader, because what it's going to do is show you, and you can filter it in different ways, but what it's going to show you is stocks that are essentially trending. Why is that important? Well, as traders, our business is in to be in the best stocks. But beyond that, we want to be in stocks that are trending, that are flying. A big misnomer of all trading is I want to buy a stock because it's cheap. Anybody ever done that? I want to buy a stock because it's cheap. I fell for that shit so many times. Oh, pardon for the swear. I fell for that stuff so many times in my life. Where and it's an Indian thing too, but it's happening to all of us, right? Where like you see a stock and you're like, okay, this is cheap. Well, cheap gets cheaper, right? Like this Excel was like 35 bucks. Like where's the bounce? Never, never, right? Never, it's a turn. Like this thing was at 38 bucks, right? Like when does cheap at some point get cheaper? It's a no buenos, right? Like, uh, Anybody remember CCIV? I saw many people buy the CCIV up here in anticipation of the merger news. I was short this thing, meaning I was betting on it to go down because once news goes up, stocks always go down. Um, so when the news came, everybody was buying it because they thought the news was coming. That means it's good. No, when the news is coming, it's bad because stocks already run before the news, right? The players are already in. So this thing's like a couple of bucks, around to 60 bucks. Right now it's dead. Cheap gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Like I, I wasted so much of my life. I can't even tell you how many times. Buying a stock because I thought it was a good deal. I love a deal. I love a deal. But buying a stock because it's a good deal is different than right buying a t-shirt because it's a good deal. They always go back down. And it's very hard. Like this is going to take... I mean, it's gonna be stuck for years, could be, right? You don't know, months, whatever it might be, right? That's gonna be very, very, don't buy stocks because they look cheap, especially like, like turdy stocks, like companies that are, you know, um, not real companies.
Now, on the other side of things, so we wanna be in the biggest trenders, right? So this is a great scan to be able to get you guys into stocks that are great, great trenders. Now, just because a stock is on the scan doesn't mean it's ready for a buy. So when a stock shows up on a scan, what it means is that you're going to follow it more closely to look for a trading pattern that indicates it could be a buy. So like this MRNA is something that I'm watching. So this is like had a big trend and it's pulled back. It's on the scan. Now it's got a level here that's building. You guys see this level? It's like at about 410, right? This seems like 414. There's like a little bit of a lid on it. So like if it gets over this level, that'll start the next run back probably into the 500. So it's essentially called like a flag. And you have a level there. So that's like a specific trading pattern, right? And this is for a swing trade. So if it gets over this, you know, I'll play this thing back, you know, closer back into the 500. Now, on the other side of things, you know, like you'll see like intraday scans. So that's something that's like a little bit different. So like I, you know, this Saba is something that was on our scan in the morning. Now, when you have something like this, right? This is like a stock that you're like looking to short essentially. So when you have something like this, you can see this like number 10 on the list. So like this stock in the morning, like it popped up essentially and we have a very, very specific pattern and this is a date, this is what's called a two-day pattern. So a two-day pattern is essentially when you have a stock that had bad news out. See this gap here? It had bad news out. Now the stock was already down like 40 points, right? So like there's not much I can do with it. But then what ends up happening is like the next day, see how like the stock, like it got tanked the previous day. So see how the next today in the morning, like the stock spiked up to 86? So it closed at 80, but it spiked up to 86 in the morning. So what happens is like a lot of times people are like, wow, like this, maybe the stock is going to bounce. It looks cheap. Well, cheap gets cheaper. Ooh, Solana, yes, give me 82 at least by the end of the webinar. I feel like a man. <laughs> so when this thing gets up to 86, it's what we call a sucker's bounce. People start to buy it because they think it looks cheap. That's where we want to short. So like this thing, like once it started to kind of tank down, it shows up on one of my intraday scanners. And then I take the short on this. So I had like an 82, 80 average. I ended up, we ended up covering our last shares, meaning like getting out of the position somewhere near 70. So cool thing about like our classes, I trade live in front of my guys every single day. I trade live in front of my guys every single day. So like in the mornings, you know, I'll put in a link for my guys and um, I'll put a Zoom link essentially in the morning. And I start trading, you know, in front of my guys. So like, you know, I, I shorted this thing. It showed up on the scan 8280. And then, man, I was holding this thing forever. Look at a good hour. Covered some at 76, 75. Covered some more at 72, 70. Covered some more at 70, 90. Meaning, right, I'm betting not to go down. So that's like, okay, I have a pattern and then I have a scan. Now I make these things happen. Uh, but it's fun. Like I, I trade live in front of my guys every day and we have a really good chat room. All these guys in here are trained by yours truly. So there's like no kind of riffraff talk of this or that. We're all with very, very certain purpose of what we're trying to do in the mornings and in the afternoons, which is essentially to make money trading trends. Good. Now, on the other side of things, when we're looking at these different scans, so like I have gain, top gainers versus top losers, there's other ways to use these things beyond just finding trading ideas. Number one is like when you're running filters, it helps you find market breadth. What I mean by market breadth is the underlying strength in the particular market. So when you look at the number of stocks that are moving up in breakout versus number of stocks that are moving down in breakdown, it will tell you the underlying strength of what's happening in the market. See, when you look at the market indexes, like the SPY, S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, 
Those things have been going up all year, right? Well, the majority of stocks have actually been going down this year, right? How's that possible? Because market indexes are weighted. They don't, really, they discount all stocks except the biggest, biggest stocks. So besides Apple, Google, and those kind of stocks, there's really no representation to them in the indexes. So it's not going to tell you really what's happening in the market. We also use this to find day two plays, which we'll go through on this scan to look for clean one day breakouts and also clean one day, two day breakouts. Now I use a 90 day, 30 day scan, which is great for finding bullish, bearish, trending stocks over five day, 30 day, 90 day periods. Now I know it's a mouthful guys, but it really only takes me about 30 minutes at night, an hour when I consider like my trading journal where like I go through my, all my trades. Well, it takes me 30 minutes to do my homework. And then I spend about 30 minutes doing my trading journal and then I'm done. We usually run this scan in the evenings to build our watch list for the next day. It'll help us find short-term, medium-term, long-term trends on very specific time frames. I use a high of day scan. So when I have like specific stocks on my watch list, what I'll do is put filters in so that I get alerts when they start to move. So maybe I build out at night like a watch list to say 20 names. But then what I start to do is apply a secondary filter to those names. So that like say when they're approaching high of day, if I use about 1% below, I start getting alerts and pings on my computer saying, hey, XYZ stock on your watch list is starting to move up fast. So then I know like, okay, shit, I better start watching this one a little bit more closely. This will also allow me to find stocks that maybe I just missed in my nighttime or morning homework. Now let's talk about putting it all together. So scanning is just one piece of the puzzle. Once you find the stocks, you have to know how to trade them. What's actually a good chart? What's a good pattern? What are the functions of a good pattern? A great pattern, meaning like a reason you would buy a stock, consists of five things. Number one, what's my price pattern? Number two, how's my volume looking? Number three, do my moving averages support it? Number four, am I trading with the trend? And number five, is the juice worth the squeeze? The juice worth the squeeze means essentially like what's my reward to risk ratio? So what do we need to know besides scanning? What makes a good chart? What trading setups I will trade? Am I day trading, swing trading, or investing? The trading patterns will change accordingly. How will I manage my risk? God forbid you buy a stock and start to go down. What do you do? Do you just hold it for life? No. We're never victims. We're always proactive. When we buy a stock, it starts to go down below our risk parameters of what we are willing to lose on a trade, $200, $300, $1,000, whatever it might be, we are out of it. What is my trading plan? So that's why I built a 60-day trading boot camp to encompass all sorts of trading. You can't learn this stuff off YouTube videos or some DVDs, some online things. Trading requires live coaching, the ability to ask questions, to call somebody. My phone is like all my students asking me questions for the most part. And my mom, when are you going to get married? And you better, today is, today is Satyanaram. Do not eat any meat. That's it, right? <laughs> That's all my phone is. But you have to be able to, like, this is a job. It's no different than being a doctor, lawyer, engineer, teacher, firefighter, to really get good. You got to be able to bounce something off somebody. But you also have to have somebody as motivated as you. Hey, I'm motivated, all right? You're motivated and you're watching some guy's recorded lesson. How motivated are you going to be? You have to always find a teacher that matches how excited you are right? He's excited or she's excited about your progress. That's really where you get going. It's that give and take. Otherwise, you're just a vendor, right? You bought something and you're a vendor. Ideally, to get really build expertise on something, it's got to be beyond that, right? But a mentor, a friendship, 
those things can go a long way into building expertise because it just makes it faster. So what we covered today is the tip of the iceberg. I teach 18 trading setups. We spend our boot camp equally between day trading and swing trading. To be a good day trader, you have to be able to learn the swing trade. I have a host of different indicators I use, but never all at the same time. So it's never gonna be confusing. You know, we use a handful of very simple ones to find our trading patterns. I teach you the risk management, how to get out of the trade when it goes against you. Like where do you put your stop losses? How to manage your reward or risk. The position sizing, like how many shares do I actually buy? And then of course, we spend just as much time guys, long and short, meaning I buy stocks because I think they're gonna go up and I bet on stocks to go down. Markets are always shifting. There's no market where you just buy, 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 buy. In a hot market, sometimes you're gonna be also betting on stocks to go down because they've gone up too much. You need to learn which setups are gonna work in specific market cycles and the conditions where they actually prosper. So what makes traders inconsistent? Poor risk management is obviously, that's the well-known one, right? The well-known one is poor risk management. I buy a stock, I think it's gonna go up, it starts to go down, I just hold it for life, I freeze. I don't get out of it, I refuse to admit Defeat on it. I've done that too many times. Hey, there's some big turd stock running around. I buy it too high. I buy too many shares. These are all things that happen. Hot damn, it's happened to me so many times. You have bad timing with your entries and exits. You don't actually know where to buy, where to exit. You don't have a systematic plan that says like, okay, when this happens, I do this. And then when this happens, I do this. And then when I see this, I can do this. And without that, right, that, that walk through, it gets a little bit tri tricky. And then I've noticed this personally. I don't know what it is. I think there's people have too much fucking money these days. Because I see so, see so many students, like, they don't treat their trading like a business. For them, it's like fun. Like, I'm here to have fun. It's like, no, making money is fun right? Making money is a lot of fun. Making money when you're good at something and you're learning something and you have a process for it, that's fantastic. But like when you're just trading the trade, like for entertainment purposes, at least for me, like that's disgusting because dude, I don't want to be at the computer all day at all. I live on the beach here. I mean, you give me good two hours of work and I can get outside. <laughs> I'd take that any day. You know what I mean? But like a lot of people don't treat trading as a business. Like they do it for fun or they do it for their, right? Just to get the thrill, like, you know, like a gambling thing. And that's when it's not going to work. And of course, emotional influence, you know, whether it's personal, your friends, family, expectation. I talked to one of my students, Shreyas, the other day, and he's like, he just turned 40. And he's like so down on the dumps on him. And he's like a pretty good trader. And he's like, you know, it's like my colleagues are like a step ahead of me in my career. I'm learning this trading. And he's like, he's like, I'm just not where I planned like 10 years ago to be. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what makes these kind of plans? Like, you knew that, you know, 28, you're going to be here at 40. I don't, you know, but like, these are the things like those expectations, they can cause you to make weird behavior sometimes. I don't know. This happened to me before, but uh you know, you can't have those kind of things. But then, of course, the, I think the most important is poor preparation. Like so many people, are you just wake up and how many times like you just wake up and face the day? First, you wake up with a plan of what you're going to do. Hey, I wake up. These are the things I got to do. These are the stocks I got to trade. This is how I got to trade them. This is what I have to do in my personal life. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. And right, wake up with an exact specific thing of, hey, this. And to this day, like, I've been trading now professionally since 2008. Man, when I wake up, I'm ready to go. I have to be, right? Like, hey, okay, I woke up. It's 530. I got to go. I got to hit the beach. I got to go for a walk. I got to FaceTime my mom. Da -da 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 then I got to get ready for the markets.
I designed Bulls on Wall Street in our 60-day boot camps that really kind of encompass all these things. You know, for as much as we spend on like trading patterns and software and those things, a big portion of like what really my job is to tap your potential. Whatever your potential is that's laying dormant, whether it's tapped or untapped, right? A really good teacher is get, can, has to reach in and get, right? It's not just, hey, these are trading patterns and then learn. It's, hey, this is how you build an edge. This is how you build an edge through discipline, through work ethic, through routines, and then you're coupling it with the technical knowledge of your craft. I think that's going to be really important. So our 60-day boot camp is 28 live classes via webinar just like this. And by the way, the awesome part of our boot camp is you can retake it as many times you want. And this class, I'm on my 55th, 55th 60-day boot camp. Think about that. How many days of how many days is that? 55th 60-day boot camp. I'm not a mathematician here, but it's like thousands of days. Thousands of days I've been teaching class. So this is what I do. My students have lifetime access to it. There will be people literally in this next boot camp, and they won't be like, you know, they just come to watch. They maybe took boot camp five, six years ago, but they come in for a touch up. You know, they come in to say hello, maybe ask some questions. It's pretty cool. I teach 18 different trading setups between long term and short term. Every class is recorded in our archive. We do QA sessions after every single one. Guys, all my students have access to my phone numbers. You know, people are texting me, calling me all day. I love it. That's what I do. I'm a teacher. We do market and trade recaps. So like, for example, today when we're trading, when I'm done, usually around lunch, I only trade usually till lunch for the most part. We do a recap. Hey, these are the, these are the trades that we took today. This is why I got in here. This is why I left here. This is how I found it. So that you can consistently reinforce. How do I find them? How do I enter them? How do I exit them? How do I find them? How do I enter them? How do I exit them? Three parts. When you see me do it hundreds of times, then you see me talk about it hundreds of times. What is the end result of how you are going to internally perceive that you're going to fucking get it right and that's the amazing part of things now the cool thing is like okay so once you're done with class we put our students on trading simulators we've got access to trade online trading journals where you can share them with your teammates your other students myself so that you can upload your trading simulator trades people can see it they can make comments on them. the help that you need from the book knowledge to, okay, I'm actually doing this on a simulator and getting some feedback, that's huge, right? There's a big portion of your learning is go out and make some mistakes. Go out and jam some buttons within the context of what we learn in class. And then from there, guess what? If somebody corrects you three, four times, well, guess what? You're probably not gonna make the same mistake again. Because that fifth time, you're like, fuck, man, I just got corrected like four times on this thing. I ain't doing this again, right? Now, I'm not making this mistake again. We work on business plans. Now, of course, we have a tr private trading community on Discord. And the cool part is like, guys, you guys get to watch me trade all day as long as I'm at the computer. I get on Zoom. I trade in front of my guys. I walk people through my process. Hey, this is opening range breakout. This is quick pullback buy. This is a view app trade, so on and so forth. That's a huge part of it. Guys, we start class September 9th. We have early bird pricing going on. It's $2,300 for the first five people. If anybody just wants to chat about this with me or my business partner, Omar, just put in your name, your phone number in the chat box. I'll probably give you a call tomorrow or Omar will give you a call. Uh, if you want to just chat with me, like what your goals, what you're trying to look for, your struggles, your passions, whatever it might be, uh, beyond just, you know, I'm trading coach. I mean, I'm just a coach. I mean, that's, I spend my day with people. So like, if you want to just chat and stuff about what we have going on or just what you have going on, I don't give a shit. Um, do it. Like, let's, let's, 
Let's work together. Uh, 2300 bucks. We have payment plans and all that kind of stuff. It's a 60 day course, guys. It's a lot of work. I mean, you can ask any of my old students that are in this right now. It's work. I mean, you got to have me hooting and hollering at you all day, smiling when you're tired. And you're like, why is this fucker smiling? <laughs> well, we have that is a lot of work. We have homework quizzes. This is a university style system. What I've thought of and how I put this together is like, how can I do this that's the most thorough, but the fastest possible? And the only way to do that is a boot camp, like to just jam it at you and then quiz you, homework you, check on you, love you, and make sure you get it right. And then you know what? You can learn something that took me years and years and years, and we can try to narrow this thing down into months and months and months. So you guys, uh, email, phone number, whatever you want to chat, uh, you just put it to all panelists. Don't worry, nobody else will see it. And we will get you all going, man. I'm looking forward to working with you guys. Mikey, I got you, man. I look forward to seeing you in class. Nazim, I got you, buddy. I look forward to seeing you in class. Christine, I got you. Looking forward to seeing you in class. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. And then I'm training in front of you guys every single day. Ryan, I look forward to seeing you in class. Cool. I got your email. Blank gold. Good, 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 good. Simon, I got you, buddy. Mr. Piper, you know it. Yes, we have a lot of students that use thinker crap. Um, I have a kind of thinker crap too, but I use TCL for my charting, but I will execute my entries on thinkorswim. I use thinkorswim and eTrig primarily. Tyler, my man, I got you, bro, and I look forward to. I look forward to working with you. Tyler, where are you from? Muriel, what's going on, girl? Luis, my friend. Come on, stop, what's that? Man, to when I first became full-time trader, man, I traveled the whole world with my laptop and my buddies. So the guy that's answering the questions, Josh and Omar, these are my childhood friends. Uh, we should travel everywhere. With their laptops, like trading, and uh, it was pretty cool. So I've been all over the place. So my Spanish is pretty good. I got all sorts of languages. Huntsville, home of the United States' largest space museum, Huntsville, Alabama. Been to Huntsville many a times. Tom, uh, I use TC2000 for my charting, E-Trade, and Ameritrade for uh, my actual, like, executions. Christine, how you doing? I look forward to it. I got, man, you got AOL email? I, you might be able to sell that for some money. That's nice. It's good to see it. Christine, you know, we got a, we got a pretty good, uh, we got a good crop of people in these last couple of boot camps. You'll find some people that you have big good friends with. You know what's amazing is we used to have like such a sausage fest uh, in our chat room as I guess all men. And then in the last like year and a half, we've been getting more women than men. And they actually, they make much better traders. Because men are, men, are, men are driven by the stupidest of things, right? And it's really for us, it's like all about ego, even myself, right? Even if I say it's not, it is. But like the women are very pragmatic for them, especially ones with families. It's about making money. Like, hey, guys, I'm in this chair and make fucking money. Not talk about, right, memes. And uh, so they make fantastic traders. So like, uh, I noticed with Monica and Tiffany and some of the girls from the last boot camp, they do really well because they're just all about business. But like for dudes, it's like, we don't really care if we make money sometimes. We just want to chit chat. We want to be in the bro zone. <laughs> Guys are like that. I don't know why it is. A Canada Trade Zero is the best. If you're not using Trade Zero, I'd probably go Interactive Brokers. Good, good, good. Anybody got any questions? And guys, this, you know, you'll have my phone number too. If you ever want to like chit chat, this is my personal number. You can, uh, 
You can hit me up any time. Ryan, I got you. Cool. Anybody else? Go in, Wolves. Go in twice. So, adios, muchachos. Adios, choyos. Peace in the Middle East, my friends. As always, man, I'm touched that for all these years, people still show up, listen to me talk about myself and my life's passion. Love you guys. You fucking turn back time.